we like it or not, when it comes to technology, entrepreneurship and careers in technology, women have it tough. But Padmashri Warrior is one woman who has trumped all of these assumptions. She was born in Chennai, she was brought up in Vijayawada and is an IIT Delhi alumnus. Before she went on to become the Chief Technology Officer at Cisco, she also used to be the CTO of Motorola. Now how did she manage to do all of this and what does she make of the scene for women in technology in India? We have her with us on the show today to answer all of this. Padmashri, welcome to the show. You've been consistently named as one of the world's most powerful women and also in technology. How has the journey been so far? The journey has been exciting. Um, I don't think when I started, I started off as an engineer at Motorola as a line engineer actually uh, after graduate school. I don't think I ever imagined that I would get this far, um, but I think hard work and uh, persistence have got me to where I am, so I'm excited about that. So as you said, it wasn't very easy doing this. What are really the challenges that you faced when you went about this? I also read somewhere that you initially wanted to start off teaching. Yeah, absolutely. When I went to graduate school, I uh, did my undergrad at IIT Delhi and I did my uh, graduation at uh, Cornell University in upstate New York. I, my plans back then was to become a professor. Actually, I wanted to come back and teach at IIT. Uh, but, you know, I discovered industry and felt it was uh, more impactful uh, contributing to the economy and creating jobs and helping companies grow. And that's what I really enjoy the most. Um, you know, for me, the tipping point in the decision between academics and being in the industry are probably more to do with leading teams. I really enjoy that as part of my job. One of the best things um, about my job is to hire great people. Uh, we have amazing people working here at Cisco. I'm in Bangalore. I just met uh, some of our engineering teams here who gave me a demo of some of the innovations they're working on. It really is motivating for me, and actually it inspires me to see innovation come from teams. Um, and I think I get that satisfaction being in private sector. As you said, it is a question of inclusion. So how do we build on that culture of inclusion? What really needs to be done? I think in general, tech industry is seen as a very tough industry. It's a highly competitive industry. It's a fast changing industry. You know, the skill sets you have today become obsolete three years from now. And I think that time scale at which technology is changing is shrinking. Um, in many ways, I think that this is somehow seen by women as a very difficult environment for them to be successful in. And that's a paradigm we need to change. I actually think the counter is true. I think women actually deal better with change and uh, we, women intuitively are better at dealing with multiple inputs and a lot of ambiguity, not knowing the answers. Um, so I do feel having the right model, right role models in the industry is important to encourage more women. And creating an environment in the tech industry where women don't have to fit into a stereotype that they are not comfortable with. You know, when I joined um, Motorola, I joined in a factory, in a semiconductor factory. Uh, there was definitely a notion that you couldn't dress uh, in a feminine way to work in a semiconductor factory back then. And I think that those are all notions we need to change. I think we need to let not just women, but men as well, be true and authentic to who they are as people so they can be successful in their workforce. Considering this was almost a decade ago, uh, would you say these notions still exist? So I think for technical women especially, it becomes a challenge that if they don't want to fit into that stereotype, can they be successful? On the other hand, if you want to be a management in management and grow up the management ladder, the stereotype that they are usually faced with is someone who wears a tie and a suit and very GQ. And you know, so women unfortunately have to choose between these uh, stereotypes and you know we don't see many women uh, who may be interested in wearing colors bright colors or not right you know it should be up to you as an individual to be able to select how you are I think globally we need to figure out how to attract more women into STEM fields starting from kindergarten middle school high school college uh, you know when I went to IIT there were five women in a class of 250 now I, I think those numbers are much better now uh, so I think things are changing. We now have more women CEOs leading global companies in tech. Um, you know, I think to me, two things need to happen. Firstly, companies need to create an environment where inclusion is important. It's seen as a business benefit uh, for the company. I think my advice to women is take the tough jobs. I think if you're going to work in a tech company, be a technical person. 
Uh, I think it's sometimes we choose the easy way out. You know, you see a lo lot more women in fields like HR and finance. These are support function. And not that they're not important. But at my advice is your career path will be much more exciting if you choose the core competency of the company you're working in. So if you're going to be in a media company, be a media expert. If you're going to be in a technology company, be a tech, take a technical role. Um, I think we need to encourage women to pursue their passion. And when a door opens, often women hesitate. You know, push through that door and go through the door so you can get out, go after opportunities. Right. So do you think uh, engineering education has a lot to do uh, with bringing up more women technologists in India? Do you think education can be improved in that sense for it? Well, I believe in STEM education. And I actually, increasingly, I'm beginning to talk about STEAM. I'm adding the A for arts in the STEM. You know, STEM is science, technology, engineering, math. But what is happening in the tech industry, we are now beginning to value design a lot more. The value is more on the usability of the technology versus the raw technology itself. A lot of our engineers, we encourage them to think about user interface, uh, user experience design, and you know, industrial design on consumer products. These things are becoming important. So there is a definite need for people who understand uh, good concepts around design, you know, who are creative in, in artistically creative, artistically inclined, people who are good writers. They use as users, we value the output of that. So someone has to explain to us, without the complications of technology, what the technology does. That requires writing skills. So there'll be an opportunity for writers to be successful in the tech industry in the future. Similarly for artistic, um, you know, artistically inclined people. So arts will play a more important role uh, in the tech segment overall. Okay, now just moving back to the discussion about, you know, women uh, technologists in the U.S. and in India. Would you say that the challenges that both of them have are pretty much the same or are they vastly different? I think probably these days the challenges maybe are the same. You know, it's a, it's, it's a family balance. How do you have a family? You don't want to give that up. And can you have a career and a family? Maybe there are more social pressures in India. Uh, but at the same time, I think in India, there's a better support system than in the U.S. You know, here there's a lot of family support typically uh, for young, uh, young parents. In the U.S., you have to rely on daycare or some support like that. So I think the challenges roughly are the same. What needs to happen is to have may maybe more role models in senior leadership. Um, I think maybe that's where US, in the U.S. there's a lot more emphasis to see C-level executives uh, and also in the pipeline. Uh, I don't know if that same level of emphasis exists in India yet. Uh, I know that last year I was in India, I went to a most powerful Indian business woman's uh, session that was hosted by Business, Today, business India today. And that was a great session. I got to see a lot of women CEOs at that session. I think we need to make those kinds of um, women very visible in the industry uh, in India. Right. On that thought of role models, uh, just hold on to it. We'll come back to it right after this break.